Hey everybody, it's Shaman Sister Sin, and you're listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by BetterHelp.com and LittleShaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. Today I wanted to talk to you about something that is understandably a popular topic when talking about relationships with narcissists, and that is the idea that you can beat narcissists at their own game. It's very common to find advice and information about how to trick, beat, best, manipulate, and or otherwise turn the tables on narcissistic personalities. Many people are desperately looking for a way to successfully defeat the narcissistic personality's defense mechanisms so that they can have a successful relationship or even just a successful conversation with this person, and others are angry looking for a way to punish the narcissist in their lives. One of the problems with this is there really is no way to do either one of these things. You cannot defeat this person's defense mechanisms, perception problems, or cognition issues. Therefore, nothing you do to get through to or punish them lands on them in any real way. It may injure or expose them momentarily, but it appears to cause no lasting damage or impression upon them at all. It's true that these personalities may never forget a wrong that they believe has been done to them or a slight aimed at them, and it's true that they can be overly even hypersensitive to criticism and pain along with super fragile and have extreme difficulty moving on from anything they believe somebody has done to them, but that isn't the same as being actually affected in a real way that matters. The superpower of this personality is their ability to ignore, dismiss, pretend, and erase things they don't like or can't deal with about themselves and reality in general. There is no real way to penetrate this that would ever be satisfying enough to bother for most people. It's a nice and admittedly powerful and persuasive fantasy, but in practical terms, it's usually a complete waste of time because the reality is that it doesn't actually do anything. It's important, therefore, to be wary of any information that claims to give you ways to handle, manage, beat, or defeat manipulation from narcissists if it involves you doing anything other than understanding that these people cannot be reached or reasoned with. Taking the position that there are ways to defeat manipulation from narcissists that will allow you to somehow come out on top in these situations or otherwise get what you want from them implies that there are ways to successfully control or communicate with these personalities, and the truth is that there are not. Unfortunately, it's very common. People dealing with narcissists are often desperate, and many are very angry. They're looking for any way to control the situation and or to control the narcissist. They feel there must be a way to do this and they may be willing to try anything, particularly things that seem like they, quote, should work. And maybe some of them would work on adults who are not pathologically narcissistic, but if you're dealing with a truly pathologically narcissistic personality, you're wasting your time and you might even be risking more than that. The things that we usually see suggested, such as intentionally provoking or pushing narcissists, shaming or trying to embarrass them, exposing them publicly, repeatedly challenging them, speaking to them like a broken record, repeatedly questioning them, and more can be not just emotionally or mentally, but physically dangerous. If you've dealt with someone who is truly pathologically narcissistic, you've likely viewed this type of content skeptically or even found it funny in a sort of a dark way. You know that it will not work on the person in your life because people who are truly pathological do not respond well to attempts to fool, manipulate, or trick them, which is almost without fail how they tend to perceive this kind of thing. Even basic attempts to understand and reason with narcissists are often reacted to with rage, let alone engaging in some kind of mental gymnastics designed to outwit or control them. Much of the conversation surrounding narcissistic relationships revolves around defeating manipulation, and to be honest, there's not much consideration given to the reality of the rage, to the fact that narcissists can be prone to violence. Even narcissists who have never been violent, that you know of, are at a greater risk for becoming violent than people who are not pathological, and narcissists who have been violent in the past are at an even greater risk of becoming violent again. Intentionally interacting with them at all, let alone doing things that they are very likely to perceive as playing games with them, trying to manipulate them, or trying to control them in any way, can be extremely risky. We are not responsible for how others perceive things, and anyone who has dealt with a pathologically narcissistic personality knows that their perception is not based in reality. So it can be impossible to avoid even accidentally doing things that they perceive as controlling or manipulative anyway. Intentional attempts to manipulate or control narcissists are often seen through immediately, and they may be responded to with extreme rage. 
We are not responsible for other people's reactions, but this does not ever relieve us of our responsibility to be careful or to use our good sense. Precisely because we cannot control other people's behavior is why we need to be as careful as we can. If these kinds of things are going to be done, the potential danger of engaging in this way with a person who has limited self-control and no limits on the things that they can justify needs to be truly understood. There is a very real danger in intentionally challenging this kind of person and it should not be taken lightly. This doesn't mean that we should just tolerate abuse or allow narcissists to get away with their terrible behavior. What it means is that there's no way to somehow handle this and stay in any kind of a relationship with them. The second that you challenge them or tell them no, you're in danger, period. The kind of danger may vary, but it's very real and it can include physical danger, even if you've never seen anything that would make you think this could be a possibility. People who are this emotionally dysregulated and impulsive can be very dangerous. There's no other way to state that, and it shouldn't be sugar-coated. It is what it is. Most of these personalities live in a fragile fantasy world because reality is legitimately too difficult for them to deal with, and many of them will do anything to protect themselves from the shame of having to face that reality, including harm other people. They are genuinely, perhaps pathologically terrified of not being in control. This informs most of their behavior, and they can be hypervigilant or even paranoid regarding what they perceive as attempts to control them. They may see this as a fight for their survival, which in a very real way, it is. And it also throws them into a rage. How dare you! This coupled with emotional dysregulation, instability, and impulsivity can create a situation that gets very dangerous very quickly. Much of the information aimed at this specific topic is purportedly regarding dealing with narcissists when there is no other choice, but the truth is that is not what many people try to use this content for. There are almost always ways to lower or even eliminate contact with toxic abusive people. There are almost always ways to use a liaison or an intermediary of some kind to facilitate communication between you and a toxic person if you absolutely must talk to them, such as if you share children. It won't make the narcissist honest or pleasant, it won't make them into a healthy person that you can actually deal with, but it will lessen the negative impact they have on your life in general. That is generally the best that can be hoped for in these situations, and time demonstrates this to most people. They try all of the tactics and they use all of the tools and eventually realize that nothing works to facilitate communication or get anything out of your interactions with these personalities. The only thing you can do is interact with them as little as possible. Part of the reason this topic is so popular is because many people claim they have no choice but to deal with narcissists when in actuality this isn't the truth. They either genuinely believe that when it's false or they use that as an excuse to stay in contact with this person for their own reasons. We often see this when the narcissist is a family member, for example, especially a parent. The reality is that people want to have some kind of relationship with the narcissist in their lives and they're looking for a way to do that. The sad truth is, the best you can hope for in these situations is to escape with your physical safety and your sanity. No matter what tricks or techniques or tools that you use, you can't penetrate a pathologically narcissistic personality because there's nothing to penetrate. There's no secret here, there's no code to crack, nothing deeper to find. You're only going to stress yourself out and potentially endanger yourself trying to do something that doesn't work anyway. There is no way to beat this person at their own game. What looks like cleverness or some kind of conscious ability on their part is often really just being practiced at automatic behavior. They have a lot more experience than you do and they are willing to do things that you are not. This is their basic nature. That's basically it. Again, for all the complex and complicated mechanisms that make up this person's personality, in point of fact, there's nothing deeper or of true significance going on here, no matter how it looks. No code to crack, no secret to figure out, no key that you can find and use to unlock anything. It's a person who is willing to do things that others are not willing to do and has a lot of practice doing them without even thinking about it. It is a person who is able to pretend to be a functioning adult human being when they really are not. There's something else too. Success of the tactics we usually see being suggested to defeat narcissists is based on being able to predict and to a point manage somebody's reaction. In most situations, what's logical would probably work because most people are logical. They will come to similar conclusions, react in similar ways, etc. But narcissists are not logical and they're not like most people. 
People who are not narcissists cannot really understand the way that narcissists think and narcissists are irrational and impulsive on top of that. Because of this, you cannot always accurately anticipate how they will react or what they're going to do. Sometimes you can't anticipate it at all because it makes no sense and there's no way to predict something that's illogical. That makes this kind of thing, at best, very frustrating and a waste of time, but at worst, legitimately dangerous. Whatever techniques you engage in when dealing with narcissists should always be evaluated for safety regarding your specific situation first and should only be employed with the goal of affecting or controlling yourself, such as the gray rock method. The gray rock method is often misused because it's often misunderstood. This is a tool to help you control yourself and your own reactions. It's not a tool that somehow controls narcissists and it should not be used that way. Trying to control narcissists is not only potentially very dangerous, it doesn't work. Even if something were to work a few times, and generally the things that are usually suggested do not, it will not work in the long run because as soon as they get wise to the game, it's done. It stops. The entire goal of this person's actions is to control all of their interactions with other people so they can protect themselves and so they can get what they want. You getting what you want, even if it's just an answer to a question, is not only not part of that equation, it is specifically at odds with their goal. Understand what this means. It means that in order for narcissists to be successful with their goals for interacting with other people, you have to automatically fail at yours, no matter what it is, because the very fact of you succeeding at all means they're not in control of the interaction and therefore they are not safe. If you look at their behavior and the way they approach interactions with other people, at the way they react to things and at what we can see of their mindsets, you can see that that's true. Ask yourself then, what is the likelihood of you getting what you want from this person regardless of how you approach it? The very fact that you want something from the interaction, from the narcissist, puts them in control. Why would they ever give that thing to you and risk losing their position? It's about trying to understand how they think. They don't see things the way that you do. And even if you don't understand anything else about how their minds work, and you might not, many people do not, it's really important to understand that. They don't think the way that you do, and the things that work with you or for you or with other people almost universally do not work with them because of that. Even things that seem to work or work at first will fail in the long run. This is a pathological personality that is so rigid, it is essentially frozen into a certain way of being. You're not going to be able to trick, manipulate, outwit, or reason them out of that. It's not even a question of them wanting to or not wanting to or whatever else. Truly pathologically narcissistic people do legitimately have serious problems with the way they think and perceive things. This does not excuse their behavior in any way, but it needs to be understood so that people can understand how much of a lost cause this really is. This is a person who has a legitimate problem, lots of them, in fact, and this can't be changed or addressed by using a conversational tactic or trying to trick them into being different. In order to get off the merry-go-round of trying to manage narcissistic personalities, we have to let go of the ego narrative that we can somehow control the situation and get what we want out of it. The goal of these personalities is to control the situation too, and they're likely willing to go much farther than you are to do it. You're also likely willing to do things like engage in compromise so both parties can get what they want, and they're not. For narcissists, the word compromise is not a noun that means an agreement that satisfies both parties. It's a verb that means taking a loss or damaging yourself somehow, such as when people say, I won't compromise my principles for money. The reality is, these personalities do not think like you do. Because of this, it's extremely difficult to succeed at anything that requires you to be able to predict their reactions or how they're going to take something. Which literally means that even just talking to them has almost no chance of succeeding in the end, as anyone who has dealt with a narcissist long term already knows. Narcissists don't appear to understand how other people think any better than we understand them, but they can become adept at manipulation because they have a lot of practice and because most people are relatively similar. Once again, this is their basic programming. They don't need to understand how others think or why something works. They just need to know what works most of the time. However, at the end of the day, the manipulation tactics they use require the usually unconscious participation of other people. You have to allow it to affect you. If you don't, the whole thing falls apart. These people are an illusion, and really, so are their tactics. It's all a smokescreen in a way, designed to hide how limited and dysfunctional these personalities really are by making it seem like everybody else is the problem. It's nothing but misdirection. 
Narcissistic manipulation is a collection of basic, primitive, even childish tactics designed to turn people against themselves. And it can work well when people don't understand what they're dealing with. That is the lesson here, and that is the way to truly defeat manipulation from narcissists. See it for what it is. It won't stop them from doing it, but it does stop it from working. I hope that clears a few things up for you. As always, I look forward to your comments, questions, and suggestions, so please keep those coming. I take appointments online over the phone, via text, via messenger, via email, and through Skype worldwide. So if you're interested in speaking with me one-on-one, -on -one, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that. I teach workshops, clinics, and seminars throughout the year, so if you're interested in seeing what we're running this month, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that. And if you are interested in joining our support group with access to exclusive content and multiple meetings throughout the month, you can visit littleshaman.org to do that as well. You've been listening to the Meditations and More podcast brought to you by BetterHelp.com and littleshaman.org. That's me, Little Shaman. May the Great Spirit bless you. Have a beautiful day.